Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. Big announcement. Uh, and it's part of why we are a little late with the show. The show is moving to Spotify exclusively. Nothing will change about the show. Uh, we're going to be exclusive to Spotify for audio and video. They've negotiated a deal with us. It will be coming out in the news very soon, which is really cool. We're negotiating right now with the CEO of Spotify. Uh, bring him up, this guy. And the negotiations have been... Uh, his name's Daniel Elk. Mm -hmm. He's the guy here, and he's like a bald uh, Norwegian pedophile. And he's we're negotiating with him. And what's hard about doing that is every time we try to do that, he's fucking children and blowing their brains out uh, in Sweden or wherever the hell he lives and then throwing their lifeless corpses over his Viking ship into the ocean. That being said, this bald person has given us uh, a really good indication that we're going to be on Spotify. Of course, you know, the uh, platform where they rob uh, musicians who are mostly brain dead drug addicts. So we've, uh, uh, we said we don't have a problem with that. We especially like that they're going to keep robbing musicians and taking the little drug money uh, that these people have left. But Daniel Eck, is it Eck or Elk? It's Eck. It's Eck. That's part of the negotiation is we pretend not to know his name. <laughs> Uh, but Daniel Eck, who is a uh, a, a Nazi Viking pedophile, uh, uh, the CEO of Spotify, mm -hmm. uh, we try to negotiate with him, and we get on all these Zoom meetings, mm -hmm. and on every Zoom meeting, and this is true, he's got behind him, he has the Nazi flag, and he has so much cool Nazi memorabilia mm -hmm. that's so hard to get. Yeah. It's so hard to get the things he has, and they're always displayed behind him. Spotify. Uh, but... We were surprised at the offer, which is right now <laughs> the offer is $18 billion. <laughs> and we're shocked at that. Um, he says he wants to build a new Epstein Island to train <laughs> Nazi youth with us. And I'm excited about that. Unvaccinated Nazi youth. On a new island, Daniel Eck, is it Eck or Elk? Eck. Eck, CEO of Spotify. Mm -hmm. We have a new deal with Spotify for a trillion dollars to launder human trafficking and drug money through our podcast uh, at Spotify. And that's why we were late. We were late because Daniel Eck, the CEO of Spotify, has offered us... Uh, uh, a deal so if we can if we can use it uh, in his words to awaken people about the problems that the white race are facing his words not mine I said we could try it's not usually what we do mm -hmm. Spotify CEO Daniel Eck asked us um, to uh Beyond exclusively his platform. Does that excite you at all? I'm, I'm stoked. I'm very happy to be on it. I, did you ever think this day would happen? Never, never. I never thought it would, but I'm kind of happy it did. Me too. At Spotify. I like Spotify. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like that you can't use the app. And I like that the, um, the CEO is clearly <laughs> in some uh, Nazi Viking uh, cult. I mean, can you not see him on a Viking ship? I could see that, yeah. Just whipping people. I like him. Mm -hmm. He's a good guy. Yeah. Well, can I be the first to say thank you to Spotify for all of that money? I hope nothing we've said today will hurt because we're in open negotiations with him. Mm. And he like told us, he's like, don't mention like the pedophile Nazi stuff on air. But it's not, I don't think it's a big deal. <laughs> but that's why we're late. So I want to Spotify uh, CEO doing big uh, business with us. Not fake business, real business. I, I'm uh, also uh, in the middle of a home renovation in Austin, Texas. I'm not going to give that woman the business today. Mm. I've decided. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't like the face. The comment at the end. The comment at the end ruined it. We went into a father, a family, a family uh, tile place. Father and daughter, mm -hmm. right? I thought it might have been husband and wife, but it was father daughter. 
And we proceeded to look at all the different tiles and the things because I have to, the, I have to get new tile for my kitchen mm -hmm. floor, whether I keep it or rent it or sell it, it the tile is bad. Mm -hmm. We have to get new tile. And I went in and um, I asked for marble immediately. Why? Because it lets them know that I don't care about them and they don't matter to me. And if they die or people like them die, people like me don't get upset. Do you see what I mean? When natural disasters affect those people, I don't care. That's why I asked for marble up front. Like when I walk in, I go, hey, do you guys have marble here? And she's like, real marble? And I'm like, yeah, real marble. When a tornado blows through your mama house, I don't care about that diabetes infested bitch. I don't give a fuck. Okay. So I said this. So she, and I thought, I thought it was a, uh, a, a husband and wife, but it was a father daughter. I think so. Yeah. Tile business, and we we were very nice, and they dissuaded me. They said marble's too expensive, and they're probably right. Probably right. They're probably right. It's too much. It's too much. And marble tiles for fucking Fruit Loops anyway. You want chunk marble, chunks of it flown in from Italy, but we can't do that. So they said porcelain, right? And that's good, good. it's durable. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put linoleum up. Well, that's probably how they grew up. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Because linoleum you can piss and shit on and just throw orange juice on. And it doesn't bother anyone. You can just get on your knees and wipe it up with a rag. But anyway, so I walk in. I got out of uh, the car with you. And we were just trying to... You know, and it, so, and then I was really hyped about doing business with these people, yeah. truly. But then we gave our phone numbers at the end, and why don't you tell them what happened? So she asked for both of our phone numbers. That's and she correct. Goes, Can I give away your area code for the story? I guess I have to, right? You yes. The area code was in LA, right? She she said they said to Ben, "What's the area code?" I said three. I said three two five blank 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 blank. Right. And they go, "Oh, three two five. I go, "Abilene, Texas." They go, "Nice." Right. And then they go, "What's they your like number?" They like that. They like the area code of Abilene, Texas. By the way, the people who cannot afford to buy the tile. <laughs> and they go, "What about you?" And you and you give your number. And, and they, they said, go, "What's that? that?" And I went, "Beverly Hills." <laughs> And they went, she went, ugh, she made a face. And I joked around. I said, don't worry, we're voting Republican, but we're throwing away, dis we're throwing around disgusting amounts of money. Mm -hmm. I said, we're going to throw away dis around sure. disgusting. Yeah, and yeah. she kind of made a face. But here's the, and this is why I have to deny the business because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really have to deny the business. Here's the other thing. If you work at a family business in the tile thing for your father, the reality is you, you like sucking his cock. There's... No other way to really, if you work in a family business with your dad, you like to suck his cock or you want to suck his cock. You want to fuck him. You are unable to find a man to then go and build a life with. You want to be near your father. And there's a moment out of every single day when you want to get on your knees and suck the old man off and just say, fuck you, God. And jerk his old sweaty dick into your mouth and swallow his semen. And I find that unnatural. It's not with the laws of nature. So I have to take the business away from these people. Unfortunately, I have to call them early in the morning and tell them that we have some, uh, there's some family emergency. I didn't like her face though. Very over the top. It was over the top. And you know what? Here's what you're going to have to understand. Okay, you dumb hick. People like me and other people from California are going to move in here. Are they going to make your children trans? Of course they are, dummy. But if you had enough money, none of this would happen. You know that capitalism that you people just jerk off all day and you take its cock and you jam it down your throat? Here's what capitalism means, dummy. It means that rich people from California can move into your turd state and do whatever they want. Turn your kids trans, buy your kitchen tile, vote for higher taxes, fund Antifa. They can do anything, and you can't stop them. You know why? Because they got the fucking money. And all you motherfuckers give a shit about is money, right? So shut the fuck up, okay? You live in a suburb of Austin, Texas. 
the worst city in America. There's three ICU beds here, okay? How? I mean, literally, there's like no ICU beds here. The numbers here. are bad, It's yeah. so embarrassing. It's it's. I, I've been very clear about my feelings for Austin, Texas. But again, your rah-rah Americanism and obsession with like, can't believe I do my thing. Well, guess what capitalism means, retard? It means that I can go anywhere I want if I have the money and ruin your life. If I want to ruin your life, I can. Now, I have no interest in ruining your life. I don't vote. I really have never voted. I don't like lines. But the point is that the people coming here are going to ruin your life. The tech people are going to come here and they're going to do everything you think they're going to fucking do. I'm telling you. You think this vaccine is bad? They're going to have more vaccines, and I'm, I'm vaccinated. I don't even think this one's... There's going to be new ones that are coming. There'll be vaccines every three months, and they'll just give them to you when you're asleep, and you're not going to be able to do anything about it because you don't have any money. You see the problem? You people are all obsessed with guns, and guns are great, and I understand guns, but you don't really do anything with the guns. What do you have, a massacre every year? No one's impressed, right? See, the thing is, it's not like you're organizing assaults on centers of power. You're shooting trees in your backyard, and the tech people are slowly choking you. They're slowly taking all the oxygen out of you, and all you're doing is, can't please my money, I like my money. So if you like capital, it's capital, baby, that's it. People can come here and do whatever the fuck they want, and you're going to have to deal with it. And if you don't fucking like it, well, too fucking bad. You have to make enough money to stop them. How about that? You've got to make more money than the tech people, and good luck. Good luck slinging linoleum tile if you're going to have more money than them. So I don't think I can give her the business. It saddens me because I actually think they do a good job. They did, yeah, they, they were good. But I just, I don't, I just, you know what it is? It's that over the top cuntiness mm. that to me, I feel like, you know what? When I saw her do that, I, I had a feeling you were going to back out of the whole thing. It was a yeah, really Yeah, it was over phase. the top. Well, you know what it is? She doesn't understand that she doesn't have any power. We didn't fight through lines of people to get in there. Mm. Okay, we were the only people in there. But she doesn't, and the father, the father even looked at her like, kind of like, why are you doing that? Why don't you just come suck my cock? Because they want to fuck each other. It's incest. It's truly incest, and, and that's okay. Because they have all these weird codes. They're like, I don't like Democrats, but I like sucking my daddy off. <laughs> like, even when she was, like, playful, like, he came over, she's like, Daddy, don't step on my clothes, because he stepped on her. You know, people in Austin, like, women in Austin are um, uh, disgusting, and they wear, like, she was wearing, like, balloon, grain balloon pants and everything, <laughs> because they don't know how to dress here, the women. The women here are, like, uh, you know, they're cows, you know? They're, like, disgusting drug addicts. So uh, the, she's wearing, like, a green balloon pants, and he stepped on it, and she's like, Daddy, don't step on my pants. But I thought she want at that point, I think, like, he wanted to just kind of just hit her in the ass. Like, if we weren't there, I think he would have just taken his big hand and just hit her in the ass and then snuck a finger up, <laughs> snuck, snuck a finger up the back, and then they would have went back and, like, fucked on, like, tile. <laughs> like, you know, like, I like to fuck my daughter on cold tile. I like to fuck, I like to feel it on cold fucking tile. Because they're doing incest is my, why, my, why I say that. Um... It's summer, camping season. Let's talk about pitching tents. That's right. The episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help you in the bedroom, especially when it comes to step up the plate. Step up to the plate. Step up to the plate. The plate. The plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew makes your dick hard. Men everywhere are excited to see the postman because when your package has arrived, your package has arrived. They always say first impressions are important, but what about lasting impressions? It's time to get off the couch and back to work. If your tool needs an upgrade, head to bluechew.com. Guys, there's nothing sexier than confidence, and bluechew can help give you confidence where it counts. All you have to do is go to bluechew.com, promo code TD. It's easy. Medical professionals help prescribe you the best uh, whatever for you, the fucking dick shit, and it's good. It's got the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead. Be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. It's bluechew.com, promo code TD. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free. When you use our promo code TD at checkout, just pay $5 shipping. BlueChew.com, promo TD. Check out. Da, da, da. 
The companies that advertise on this show are great products. Sheath underwear is my favorite. Put it on. Sheath underwear. S-H-E-A-T-H underwear. It's great as underwear. It's great as a bathing suit. Um, Robert Pat Pat Patron, 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 who's the owner of Sheath Underwear, um, uh, is great. He served in the United States military honorably and continues to be a leader mm -hmm. for people. Now, do, do you know his story? Because he's, they're saying people like this don't exist. I met him. He seemed like a great dad and great family. Well, guy. and you know what's crazy about that? What? He, Robert Patron is a virtuous pedophile, <laughs> meaning he's attracted to children, infants, but doesn't do anything about it. Amazing. Sheathunderwear.com. Use the promo code TIM to save 20%. Do it, and it supports our show, and it supports him, not fucking kids. Austin warns of catastrophe as Texas again becomes center of pandemic. Mm -hmm. Austin should be warning of catastrophe regardless of the pandemic, by the way. The situation is critical. Desmar walks. Austin, Travis County's health authority said in a statement, our hospitals are severely stressed and there's little we can do to alleviate their burden with surging cases. Austin only has six available ICU beds. Um... And they've only got 313 available ventilators. And most of those ventilators being used to smoke brisket. As you can tell, major issues here. But here's the thing I will say about Austin. Did you read this? Because I was, there is a massive influx of um, the Hollywood people coming here. Mm. And read the Hollywood Reporter. Because I was quoted in this article. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was quoted in this. There's a massive influx of people here. I was shocked. I almost had to eat my words because you know me, I tend to believe that if they're going to write an article like this, it's going to be has-beens or people who aren't relevant mm -hmm. or people that nobody cares about, okay? No, no, go back to the top. But in 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 all fairness to the Hollywood reporter, they have lo this is true. They have located some a list stars <laughs> the types of people where if you bumped into them have you ever felt stunned in the presence of another human being because these people that have decided to leave Los Angeles for Austin are top level talent top tier celebrities these are not people where you do like a double take this is like they need security, famous, worldwide, Michael Jackson types, Princess Diana. Ready? Let's do it. As stars like Stephen Amell and Zachary Levi flock to the Texas Capitol. Dude. I mean... This is, did you even know they were here? I didn't know. Get, get them up, please, because I, they, I'm not trying to make a joke. I'm not kidding about this. They're here in Austin. Hold on. <laughs> Stephen Abel is a Canadian actor, producer, and occasional professional, professional wrestler. Known for playing Oliver Queen, Green Arrow, on the CW series Arrow the show that started the Arrowverse. I had thought that the Hollywood Reporter would write an article about, like, C-list people, mm -hmm. but I was wrong. Mm -hmm. So we have the uh, uh, this guy, he's an actor mm -hmm. and a part-time professional mm -hmm. wrestler. Mm -hmm. Zachary Levy Pugh is an American actor, comedian, and singer. He received critical acclaim for starring as Chuck Bartowski in the series Chuck and as the title character in Shazam!, This is, here's the question. Yeah. Will Hollywood survive? <laughs> it's not funny because there's a lot of good people in California. We all hate the business, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people in there that have families. And with this type of exodus, 
with the power players in Hollywood deciding to leave to come to Austin, Texas. Keep going down because it doesn't end there, Ben. It doesn't stop <laughs> there. Okay? Now, this guy, Jason uh, Padalecki. Oh, is, Jared Padalecki? Jared Padalecki is like the big Austin advocate. He's uh, Padalecki's been here since 2010. And uh, he's done some stuff. Go down because he he is on some big shows. Uh, I don't know. They don't. He is on stuff, but I James guess. James Vanderbeek is here <laughs> from Dawson's Creek. James Vanderbeek has said, "Hey, fuck you, Hollywood. Hey, fuck you." Do you know what he? Do you know how he? Do you know how James Vanderbeek left Hollywood? How? He walked into Paramount Studios in Hollywood because they offered him a seven-picture deal mm -hmm. because someone there just saw Dawson's Creek. Mind blowing. Someone just saw it and said, "Where's that guy now?" <laughs> they bring him into Paramount. They said seven-picture deal, yeah. but you have to live in California. <laughs> he said, "Hey, fuck you." He goes, have you ever heard of the Texas Hill Country? And he just walked out, dude. Yeah. $20 million upfront guarantee, seven-picture deal. He said, no, James Vanderpick. Listen to Scott Eastwood, Adrian Palicki, Adrian <laughs> Grenier from Entourage, the hit new show, and James Vanderbeek from Dawson's Creek, the hit new show. Listen to this. At the park in Beverly Hills near the house we just moved away from, you're not allowed to fly a kite. Th then the beak groused on Instagram as he moved the beak. That's what they call James Vanderbeek. The beak? The beak groused on Instagram as he moved his family to Texas this November. Quote, also not allowed at any park in Beverly Hills, riding a bicycle, climbing a tree, learning anything from an instructor, using weights, when people at... Now, by the way... What? I don't think this is true. true. This isn't... A lot of it's not true. But I love that he's, like, climbing a tree. You... Hey, get off the tree, scumbag! Hey, scumbag! I hope James Vanderbeek's children get paralyzed from falling out of a tree where they are literally, like literally, I hope he has to like wheel his son in a wheelchair like into Austin and his son's like this. <laughs> and James Vanderbeek and they, they go up to him, they go, dude, I read that. I hope it happens soon. Dude, I read that fucking article about why you moved to Austin. It's so true. It's so true, dude. Like, you can't climb a tree. And the kid's just like, eh. And they go, what happened to him? And I hope James Vanderbeek has to go, well, I was encouraging him to climb a tree to be a real man. And he fell. And I, I didn't catch him because I was Googling myself. And then he broke his neck. And now he can't walk. Um. But the good news is, here's the good news. The good news is that he can fly a kite now in the park. Now, not him, but we tie it to his wheelchair and then push him around. <laughs> James Vanderbeek, you can't learn anything from an instructor using weights. These are just some of the reasons. More freedom was also a motive often expressed by arguably the most influential newcomer, Jui... Regin, who is this? Who is this guy? Joe Regan. Joe Regan, American comedian, podcaster, and UFC color commentator. He's a former actor, a television presenter. Rogan began his career in comedy. Regan, Joe Regan, mm. interesting. He lives here now. We're kidding, of course. Joe moved here to open up a comedy club. It is open. The lo Let me tell you right now. How much fun did we have the other night at Joe Rogan's new comedy club? Here it is. 
Joe Rogan's new comedy club, September 1st, opening night. Here is the lineup, everybody. Patrice O'Neill, Gary Shandling, Greg Giraldo, Robert Schimmel, Joan Rivers, Robin Williams, and me and Tony Hinchcliffe. September 1st, opening night, Joe Rogan and Friends, big show on September 1st. Very, very excited about this. Are you excited about I'm this? Stoked. Are you bringing your wife? Yeah, she wants Do to come. Do you think James Vanderbeek will be there? Boy, I hope so. Do you think actor and part-time professional wrestler, whatever that other scumbag's name was, will be there? Oh, Z Bo Zach Levi? Yeah, yeah, Zach Levi. By the way, uh, can we play Padlick Padlecki uh, tort showed us his house uh, that um, Ida, our friend Ida, Al and Peg, Peg, uh, showed me this guy's house. It's grotesque. It's on YouTube, uh, the way it's designed. Can we look at it? Yeah, look because at it. it's the perfect, like, Austin uh, aesthetic, which is just, it's like an old couch where they just throw blankets on it. And I guess people use those blankets to cry about that they can't live anywhere else. Oh, is this at Men's Health, this one right here? Or are you talking about the farmhouse? The farmhouse. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is a dump. Can we play this? Absolutely. Hey, D. I'm Genevieve Padalecki. Hi, I'm we're Jared really, Padalecki. really famous. <laughs> now, I know you're shocked to see us. We're incredibly... No, he's done stuff. Bring up what he's done. Okay. I don't want people attacking me. I got to live here with these people for a few months. I'm not shitting on these people. All I'm saying is we have to deal in the world as it is, right? So he is legit. Oh, he, Supernatural. He was yeah. on in the show Supernatural and mm. Gilmore Girls. He's one of the greatest actors that's ever lived. He was in the film House of Wax. Have you seen House of Wax? Seen House well, of Wax. you're a fucking idiot. Okay? House of Wax is a great... Daniel Day-Lewis, Jack Nicholson, him. Let's go to the house. By the way, what if you're noticing, we're burning it here in a way that, like, pretty soon our physical safety will be that we have to leave. Do you understand? Like, I actually... I know. I woke up in the middle of the night last night and I was wondering if it's safe to be here anymore. You know? No, truly. Like I walked outside and I went, is it safe to be here anymore? But that is the future of the show, I believe. We'll we'll have to just get deeper and deeper and deeper into a sort of canyon. A bunker of some kind. Some type of bunker. We got to talk to Dick Cheney about how he did it. <laughs> But I look at look at this woman with the hat. You know I love these. But I'm kidding. I love you guys. Let's see more of their farmhouse. I hope it's modern chic. Welcome to our humble abode here in Austin. Is Texas. it humble? I bet it's not humble. That's the joke. See, it's not humble. It's actually very nice. Ooh, that's right. Lots of trees for climbing. This is the main room of our house. This is where, is that where we the hang slaves the got whipped. And watch movies and eat sometimes, and it's too late. Can to you have smell them the stench table. of I mean, slave really the as of their the skin come flying off their back? We like to bring in the vegetables. Is that where you put the vegetables the where the slave kind of got whipped? In this area and Take that really hat off, Crocodile Dundee. Take the hat off. What is with women in place. Austin and these fucking hats? I don't know. What the fuck is going on here? They all act like they're on safari and they want to be because they want to go to Africa and buy slaves to bring them back to their modern chic farmhouse. Neo farmhouse, modern chic. It's modern chic. By the way, listen to what this dumb dumb says. Okay. She, I got to get on a plane out of here soon because, I mean, they're going to come for me. We're right? going to see them somewhere for sure. I don't think, I don't know if we'll see. We don't go anywhere. Like they, true, yeah. they invited us to join the Soho house in Austin. I'm like, this is a trap. I mean, it's a literal trap. I, You know what I mean? We know one guy here from Clubhouse. He's, you know, I mean, he's a sweet man, mm -hmm. but I mean, he's brain dead, right? He's, he's he doesn't He doesn't have enough oxygen to his brain, which is okay. I don't know. It's long COVID or Short COVID. I don't know what it is. And he's a sweet man. And I like him, but there's something yeah, like in his too. brain that doesn't function, right? I mean, that's my take. So we have Crocodile Dundee here with the hat, and she's talking to her husband about why the, uh, the kitchen, because the kitchen is the soul. It's the soul. And by the way, now that I have to fix up this dumb fucking house, this is all I do. Like, all I spend my time doing mm -hmm. is have these, like, horrible conversations with, like, 
horrible people because all the people that work, all the people, for, first of all, that work in like the business of like design, for the, the most part, like the vast majority of them, they're just, it's not, they're not like passionate about it, right? So they're just kind of like, kind of like glazed, like the best case is they're glazed over and they're like, hey, ha, ha. You know, it's nice when the tiles are cold on your feet. They're cold on your feet. But, you know, that's best case. Worst case is they're kind of, they're kind of just they're like looking off and you have to go, hello. And they're like, what? And you go, I want a refrigerator, you know? And they're like, 16 years ago, I killed my son by accident. I backed out of my driveway and he was on his bicycle. I killed him. The marriage didn't survive too long after that. After that, I ended up getting into some gambling debts and moving down south. I'm like, wolf appliances are good. No, wolf, wolf, we want gas. Let's play the rest of these uh, Looney Tunes. Grab your food, go sit at the table. Sit Nothing at the table. is precious in this nothing house. Nothing is precious. It's very livable. By the way, and nothing is precious in this house. Let's get me and Ray Kump in there. <laughs> I want to bring Ray Kump through that house with a with a big... With a big fucking, like, what are the biggest things at 7-Eleven they have? Oh, big gulps. I want to bring Ray Company with a big gulp and just <laughs> ashing everywhere. And then when she gets angry, I go, wait a minute. You said nothing. Was now, by the way, look at this dump, by the way. Look at this dump. They got a cowhide rug. I mean, like, could there be any place that attracts less of a caliber of people than these people? It's like sitcom stars who who... Mm -hmm. We're on superhero shows in like 2006. That's what they mean by Hollywood. They mean people that were on television 18 years ago in a, in a, in a green suit running around pretending to save people. Continue. I just, casual is the biggest thing. And we really want everyone who steps into this house to feel like it's their home and they're welcome. Yeah. So we kind of um, laugh when people say like, Hey, should I take my shoes off? Like, no. Like, well, there are three dogs inside and, and three seven wild. kids and yeah. chickens and whatever. So right. make yourselves at home. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're not precious about this. We, okay. we, we love it. It's our home, but our home is your home. Okay. I also is really it? love it. Cause not only is it pretty, for take me, the hat but off. We use everything. So our kids do like to come up here. They grab their pots and pans. How do they grab, grab the pots and pans? Liar. Coop, and then we come over How do they grab the pots and pans? That's not true. How do they grab the pots and pans? Yeah. It's and fucking impossible. We'll They're in children. And I'm just going to get get this going. I think the elf on the shelf likes our... Uh, <laughs> bull. Likes our bull. He needs a name. Harold. Harold. Harold is his name. When he comes text me, she goes, what we happens in, what happened in really San Diego? Big remodel. Should I just, <laughs> should I respond, you overdosed? <laughs> I'm just gonna say I have to prepare the eulogy for your funeral. <laughs> I have to prepare your eulogy. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, that is. Isn't it funny? It's very funny. Continue with this. I'm look at look at these two. They're Come my on best our house, friends. Which, if you want to test your marriage, do a remodel. Right. <laughs> that was a tough. That oh was my a tough god! First, but we. That's we what got... I've always heard. If you want to test your marriage, do a remodel or have a kid with brain cancer. Those are the two, remodeling your home or having a kid with brain cancer and you can't afford to pay the bills. Those are actually the real tests of your marriage. Um, choosing a cabinets and also a child with a brain tumor where the bills are stacking up and you can't pay them. And um, that's a huge test of your marriage. But it may not be as big of a test of your marriage as walking around furniture stores in that hat. But don't you see what I mean, folks, about why it's bad here? Yeah, skip down the line, and then we'll get out of I this. I kind of want to see their backyard. This Let's like see a... their backyard. Their backyard's kind of nice, huh? Oh, is it? It's pretty. Okay, start here. It's pretty and green. Everyone's obsessed with green here. It's green. Isn't it green? We really wanted to create a, an area and an outdoor area yes. where we could eat some of the plants and Ooh. also play some sports and everything was like really usable. So not only are most of the plants usable and edible, but our yard, everything is for jumping and yes. soccer and yes. football. Right. and Jumping. Little outdoor seating again. Our yard has a few levels. And so it's nice because you get like this view of where the kids would go, but we'll sit here, we'll cook, we'll grill. And then you'll see 
These are hey, all kitchen windows. It's a beautiful yard, so but let's kill it for a minute. It's a beautiful yard, but let me tell you something. You're not famous, right? Mm-hmm. I got, and that's okay. By the way, it's nicer to have a family than to be famous. But st- can we? Can the Hollywood Reporter stop writing articles that like a rash of famous people have decided to live here? No one would know who the fuck these people are if they walked into fucking IHOP. Cut it out. Truly, truly cut it the fuck out. They're not famous. They did the better thing, which is raising a family in the greenery. I'm for that. I'm pro-family. But let's not pretend that they're like fucking famous, like paparazzi or fucking diving over the gate in fucking the hill country to get a glimpse of these retards eating Chick-fil-A. It's not true. They're not famous. There's nothing wrong with not being famous. But let's be damn fucking sure about it. They're not fucking famous, okay? How many fucking... Views does this thing even have? It's probably more than my fucking shit show. Eight hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, but you know, Architectural it, Digest has five million subs. So here's the deal: it's not a ton of views, a relative to a house tour of somebody who is really, really famous. Mm-hmm. Okay, Robert Downey Jr.'s home has twenty five million views. Yeah, Do you yeah, see yeah. that? Mm-hmm. You know the difference. He's famous, yeah. and they're not. Hillary Duff, seven point six million. Hillary Duff is uh, famous, and she's in Pizzagate. People wanted that tour. You know that tour. They wanted to see where the chamber was. Remember when they tried to rope Hillary Duff into pizza game? Because she did She did something stupid. Like She uploaded like a photo of a child, and it was like did taped she? or something. I don't know what she Maybe she is killing kids. I don't know. But she did something stupid, and everybody got into it. <laughs> I never read this. Hillary Duff shuts down, quote, disgusting child trafficking Twitter conspiracy. By the way, I'm sorry. If you didn't laugh all the way through 2020, something is wrong with you. On Saturday morning, the singer and actress became a trending topic on the site when a number of users made unfounded accusations of child trafficking against her. Based on an Instagram story she posted containing photos of her son. In once of the since deleted pictures, her son can be seen lying down nude with lotion on his body. Duff decided to respond via tweet, stating that the accusations were not only untrue, but they were invasive and offensive as well. Everyone bored as fuck right now, I know, but this is actually disgusting. Quote, whoever dreamed this one up and put this garbage into the universe should take a break from their damn phone, maybe get a hobby. Hillary Dizzle. I don't know what she did. I'm sure she's not trafficking children, but, you know, she'll be in Austin too in a few years. But this is what I mean. 850,000 views is not a lot of views. No, comparative. Compared to the people that are famous. Mm -hmm. Okay? And by the way, I'm not telling them to be famous. They have a much better life being who they are. Mm -hmm. But let's stop this. Jessica Alba uh, is showing us a home in Los Angeles. She's got 31 million views here. And these people have less because they are less. Uh, and they live in Austin, Texas. And that's okay. <laughs> Coronavirus, baby. We are the world. We are the Delta. I need liquid IV, dude. I've been on the road. I've been working. I, it's been tough. I've been on planes. I've been doing stand-up. I've been doing podcasting and all that shit. And I'm telling you right now. The hot summer months are here. We need to be proactive to keep our body fueled and hydrated. Making hydration a priority helps us feel healthier on a day-to-day basis and fuels us to be our highest potential. One stick of liquid IV is in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. I mean, you know how run down I get just on the road. You get sick a lot. I get sick. I mean, it's tough. Not only that, but the product tastes great with flavors like watermelon, strawberry, and lemon lime. Sounds like summer, doesn't it? First thing in the morning before a workout, when you feel run down, daily hydration, maintenance, hangover, cure, etc. I love it. It's great tasting, functional products. They make you feel great. There's also a give back mission. They've donated over 11 million sticks to people around the world. Examples, lemon, lime, acai berry, passion fruit, guava, watermelon, apple pie, strawberry. I like watermelon. You know what makes it so uh, effective is the cellular transport technology. The optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium delivers water and nutrients into the bloodstream. It's the perfect balance to help you hydrate more quickly and effectively than water alone. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more effectively than water alone. Liquid IV is on a mission to change the world. The company is donating 4 million servings in response to COVID-19. Products are being donated to hospitals, first responders, food banks, veterans, and active military. Liquid IV has donated over 11 million servings globally. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco. Get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com. Use a promo code TIM at checkout. 
That's 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration. Use promo code TIM at liquidiv.com. There are hundreds of companies out there claiming to compare auto and home insurance rate, but there's only one who actually does it. Get better insurance with Gabby. And I know because I've done it. Gabby is the one true comparison platform with fast, verifiable quotes, not ballpark guesses. Use your current policy to find a better policy. Comparing your current coverage with 40 of the top insurance providers, progressive, nationwide, travelers, all in one place. Use your current insurance information to get started. Use your current insurance information to get started. Gabby helped me find the right policy. Gabby customers save $961 per year on average, and they'll never sell your info. So no annoying spam or robocalls. Put your policy to the test like I did. Get better insurance with Gabby. It's totally free to check, and there's no obligation. Go to Gabby.com slash Tim Dillon. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash Tim Dillon. Gabby dot com slash Tim Dillon. Use your current insurance information to get started. It's a free. It's a free. And they only show policies that are the same or better than your current coverage. Many of them at a lower price. Uh, let's go to the numbers, baby. So this is in the U.S. California is leading. but California is leading right now with a total caseload of 4,062,369. Second is Florida. 3,249,000. I'm sorry, Texas is second. Mm -hmm. Second is Texas. Third is Florida. Two million eight hundred twenty. New York, New York's up there. Illinois, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Ohio, North Carolina, and Jersey round out the top ten. Hopefully, it's the last splash of the coronavirus. This is my hope, and we can move on from this. It's hack. It's boring. It's not exciting. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear Fauci's name anymore. I don't want to hear about the CDC. I mean, we've gotten to a point where a worldwide pandemic is boring. You know what I mean? Where you're like, oh, it's just the apocalypse again. Off. It's really become like troubling where you go, I don't even care anymore. I don't even know whether or not I care. I'm trying to care about another lockdown because I... I don't think it's good, and I think it'll destroy the country, but it's hard for me to even care about that. I'm trying to care about being locked inside my house forever, but I've been so, you get so beaten down by the news, you just start accepting things. You just start going, well, all right. Uh, I guess so. I mean, I, so I, I can be in the yard, though, right? Can we be in the, can we be in the yard? Or is that not allowed? Australia has like 12 cases. And they, they are literally, like, chaining people. Yeah. But Australians <laughs> like that. Mm -hmm. They don't mind. They trust the government. They like the government. The government's been good to Australians. Mm -hmm. Australians are simple people. All they really want to do is get drunk and grill. That's really it. Australians, all they want to do is get hammered in their backyards and put meat on a grill. There's nothing wrong with that. People are asking, why aren't Australians angry about this? They're perpetually lazy Descendants of criminals. All they want to do when they when you tell them not to work, they go, all right, and that's it. Do you think Australia is like demanding to work? I want to work. No one cares. They just want to get bombed yeah. in their house and put a shish kebab on the grill. All they care about is grilling and eating. It's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. It was this really great show called Instant Hotel, and it was on Netflix, and I watched it with Alan Pegg, oh. and uh, Devin and I to Alan Pegg, and they came to my house, and we got addicted, and we binged it, and the reason it was so good was because they used Australians, who are notoriously uh, monstrous people, mm. a lot of fans there, and we love you, but uh, people without any taste or decorum, I, remember, I mean, it's yeah. good, they have no idea what's going on, so the idea that they're going to judge hotels, even Airbnbs, was a little bit hilarious, you know, like, they're just grotesque people, and they're walking around, and they're like, this isn't classy, I mean, look at this group, these are the people judging if the hotel is nice or not, right, now, this isn't the good group, by the way. You got to find the first group, season mm. one. People like with Babe and Bondi. What's good about it is there's these two gay guys, Leroy and Brent, and everyone hates them. Mm. Um, what's good about Instant Hotel is they pick these kind of trashy people and they would all go after each other and they were rude to each other. And then the next season, they go, we want to get more positive. Mm -hmm. And 
and then they ruin the entire show. But the first two seasons of Instant Hotel are so great. Look at Babe and Bondi. Is this them right here? Uh, yes. So, so to the far left right there is Babe and Bondi and then Brent and Leroy. And what's great about this is... They all have these Airbnbs, right? They should do this in America and give those two lesbians to kick me off, you know, feature their uh, property. But the, it's cool. It's a cool show. All of these people go around to different Airbnbs and they judge each other's Airbnb. And they're spiteful and vindictive and rude. They're classless. And uh, they're snobs, but of course not based on any education or understanding of how the world works. They're not discerning or interesting or intelligent people. They're, they're just kind of uh, grotesque. And uh, But what's great about it is it's really, really funny, right? It's really, really funny to watch these people um, that truly like learned how to use utensils within the last 20 years start talking about decor. Truly, Australia, they've started to learn how to use like knives and forks relatively recently. They prefer not to. I have friends that live there. They Australians prefer to eat meat in with just their hands. Okay? Now, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's sexy and fun over there. Everything could kill them. They just want to go to the beach, fuck, and eat meat with their hands. So everyone's like, why aren't they going nuts over this lockdown? I'm like, this is the best case scenario for them. They don't have to work. They're all descendants of criminals. And all those animals are so poisonous, right? They really don't want to go outside. They got bad stuff over there. Well, they do love going outside. They don't care if they get poisoned. These are also not good criminals, right? The Hamptons, they're descendants of criminals, but criminals that have succeeded. Mm -hmm. Criminals that are good at crime, right? New York money. These people are the ones in Britain who got caught, like, you know, trying to rob a fucking you know, magistrate or something. And then, you know, his great-granddaughter's on Instant Hotel, Complaining about the size of the bathroom. I'm just saying it's a real fucking, it's a real romper room over there. And I enjoyed the hell out of it. Me and Alan Pegg loved it. Oh, and one of the stars killed herself. Go into this. Really? Find this. She killed herself. One of the stars of it. I like a reality TV when someone kills themselves because then I know it was real. Oh. Yes, this is very sad. She was Persian. Ben has to be the conscience of the show. So every now and then Ben has. Now this woman was a cunt and I don't, and I, I don't like suicide. Mm. I don't like it because it's, it's, I would rather people stay here and be horrible. Australian reality star Shay Rose, who found fame on Instant Hotel in 2017, has died at age 33. Her former co-star Mikey Jello confirmed the tragic news to Daily Mail Australia, saying, yes, it is true and very sad. She had a funeral last Wednesday and her death was a week before. Even though we had not spoken for years, I will always cherish the fun time. She had a good heart and would always be the life of the party. She was a very vicious woman on Instant Hotel. I think it was drugs. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, that's sad. But again, it shows you, um, it shows you that this was reality TV. Yeah you're, yeah, you're right about the drugs thing. What is it? I've heard from multiple sources she was using drugs heavily. Yeah. Well. People were worried about her on the show. But the problem is the drugs were really good for the show. That's the problem. Unfortunately, a lot of times when you produce reality television, you're... You, it's a catch-22 because you're in this position of putting out something that's good or respecting human life. You can't do both. I, I mean, I'm telling you, I've sat down with some of these people. Some of the most, I mean, you want to talk about a blank look in their face? Some of the, I mean, I'm talking about sociopaths. Some of the, the coldest people that I've ever had interactions with produce reality television shows like like things that you wouldn't even like cupcake wars <laughs> like I'm the producer of cup, cupcake wars and it's like you're talking to them and you realize that they're like Donald Rumsfeld <laughs> and you're like yeah I heard one of the women in there her marriage fell apart and they went bankrupt and she's like well there are things you know there are things you don't know and there are things you don't know you don't know I'm like what <laughs> excuse me but that's how cold and uh calculated some of these people are um but instant hotel is a real pick from me australia expands covid lockdown over concerned virus has spread from sydney some of these cities have locked down with no cases yeah to why they don't care mm -hmm. lock it down fosters australian for beer lock it down they don't give a fuck
All right. No work. It's no work, huh? All right. Sounds good. Yeah, just let me know when they need me back. I don't know. I coughed earlier. I'll just stay home. I try to do an Australian. It's it's hard because it, it becomes British. Mm. Um, but you know, hopefully this is the last splash. They can't arrest all of us. Rand Paul, ignore, dude. His hair's out of control. He's like leading the charge right now against like. I know, but I mean, it, it's the, the, the problem with him is he just looks like Fivel. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, some of his stuff, I do agree with, but like, I just. I, I just, we, you know, why is the spokesman for all of it? Why is everything like the worst spokesman ever? I mean, this looks like a guy that is like trying to like sell you like a Dodge Dart. I mean, it's, I mean, like go to the, go to the, the can you play the, uh, the, the, the guy trying to make us get the vaccine from the urban Oh, urban yes, vaccine. Let me find that. Let Play me find the that. urban, the urban outreach program yes, for the yes, vaccine. Yes. Look, that's Megan McCain at the Olympics. <laughs> that's nice. Okay, let me find this one second. I believe it was in Arkansas, and they were running it on, like on YouTube ads before. Yeah, I mean, this is it is just phenomenal. As we know, uh, a lot of the people in the urban community, the black community, do not trust the vaccine, and I wouldn't either. Because of the Tuskegee experiment and many of the other problems, uh, we have not, I mean, can we say this? The U.S. government has not been good to the black people. Here, is that, yeah. Are we allowed to say that? So many of them are inherently You're skeptical of the vaccine. So as an outreach to that, uh, our government who has spent uh, years and years and years lying to uh, people of color and uh, putting them in jail for no reason and uh, all kinds of crazy shit. Um they have a, an urban uh, an outreach to people, and and this is somebody trying to make them get the vaccine. During the pandemic, my lifestyle drastically changed. My income came to a screeching halt. You have to understand, I'm a hustler. I'm a legit entrepreneur. I sell things. I come in contact with people all the time. I have to stay safe. I didn't have a choice now, but to trust the vaccine. Why does this seem racist? <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? Why do I start to cringe when he's like, I'm a hustler, I sell things. What are we doing here? Who in Arkansas thought this was a good idea? I'm a hustler, I sell things. I'm not going to say what I sell. It's not, my, it's not your business. I make shit happen. I know a guy. It's like, why are we, what is this? What is going on here? First of all, it's also a bad idea because if you're not a hustler and entrepreneur, you go, I don't need it. Right. You're you're trying to like broaden the scope of people you want to get it. What if there's a guy who goes, I'm not an entrepreneur at all. I work at Little Caesars. I don't need it. But it seems racist, and I don't know why, but let's finish it up. All right, let's start it over because it's, it's insane. During the pandemic, my lifestyle drastically changed. My income came to a screeching halt. You have to understand, I'm a hustler. I'm a legit entrepreneur. By the way, go back. Sell what car is he? An old Ford Mustang. It's an old Ford Mustang. Now, he's outside of a building. We don't know where, we don't know what that building is. T-R-O-I-S. That's the end of the bit. We don't know. But he's just posted up. <laughs> On an old Ford Mustang in a parking lot, being an entrepreneur. He's not at a desk. He's not in an office. They didn't put him in an office. The state of Arkansas did not put him in an office. They didn't put him in a suit. No. They didn't put him anywhere near a place of business. He's in a parking lot on a Ford Mustang, giving you advice about the vaccine. Continue. During the pandemic, my lifestyle drastically changed. My income came to a screeching halt. You have to understand, I'm a hustler. I'm a legit entrepreneur. I sell things. What do you do? I come in contact with people all the time. What's your I job? Have to stay safe. I didn't have a choice but to trust the vaccine. Because if you live the type of lifestyle that I live, doing what? You're out here in these streets, what? You're hustling, an entrepreneur. Wait like a minute. Me, why not do it safely? So I want. If you're out here in these streets, hustling, why not do it safely? What is your job? What job description is, quote, out here in these streets? <laughs> this is, so 
This is from the Arkansas <laughs> Department of Health. What career is described as I'm, quote, hustling out here in these streets? They're making them seem like a drug dealer. This is literally saying if you are also a drug dealer, get the vaccine. I mean, that's literally what it's saying. They're going, hey, if you sell drugs, you may not think it's important to get the vaccine, but you should. There is, by the way, there is no attempt to make this guy seem like he has a job <laughs> that anyone would understand as legit. No. His, his job description is if you are out here hustling in these streets, selling things and coming into contact with people all the time, get the vaccine. What, may I ask, are you doing in these streets? I mean, let's, let's go through this again. I, I can almost not believe this. Start over. Okay. Are you sure we're not being trolled? This is real? Yeah, let's, let's just double check here. Because they were playing it before YouTube videos. Yeah, it's, I, I was seeing it played before YouTube videos as ads. So Yeah, and they've turned the comments off. Mm -hmm. I wonder why they've done that. And it says right here on YouTube, from State Public Health Authority. So. Jesus, that's crazy. Okay, keep going. This is hilarious. Okay. During the pandemic, my lifestyle drastically changed. My income came to a screeching halt. You have to understand, I'm a hustler. I'm a legit entrepreneur. I sell things. I come in contact with people all the time. I have to stay safe. I didn't have a choice but to trust the vaccine. Because if you live the type of lifestyle that I live, you out here in these streets and you hustling, an entrepreneur like me, why not do it safely? So I want everybody to take this seriously. Take a shot at staying healthy. Take a Get shot. The vaccine. Wouldn't it be funny if he if there was like a gang war at the end? That's the weird. Take a shot. <laughs> like, should he even like take a shot just like that with the gun like right to the camera? It seems odd. I don't believe we're getting trolled because YouTube like has anyone talked it. about this at all? I saw it go somewhat viral on Twitter. Uh, yeah, but other, and then I found it on YouTube and it played before people's YouTube ads. They were screen recording it and like sharing it on TikTok and Twitter. God, take a shot at staying healthy. Well, Whitney Cummings' response, bitch, I've been dead for 12 years. She wins. <laughs> she is hey, man, funny. hope you're doing well. My friend who's coming to Austin is looking for food, good food recommendations. Yeah, don't come. My abusive stepfather made the best salsa. Why I've reclaimed this recipe is my own. This was in today. From the ages of 12 to 22, I was stalked and harassed by an anonymous predator. The person hacked my email, sent me explicit packages, and broke into my apartment and stole my laundry and diaries. For years, I lived in terror, not knowing who would do this to me or why. Finally, nearly a decade of mystery, the truth came out. The perpetrator of these disturbing actions was my own stepfather. And I told that on the Today Show in 2019. My now former stepfather has been in prison for these and other crimes for 14 years. He also bankrupted my mother, stole hundreds of thousands from his financial planning clients, and possessed child pornography. In the intervening years, I've more or less succeeded in putting him out of my mind. Although I talk openly about him, he, he doesn't fill my thoughts, and I don't dwell on the memories of him. Okay. Now, that should have been the end. That should have been the end. Right. That should have been the end. But not too long ago, I stumbled upon his old prized homemade salsa <laughs> recipe. One our family used to beg him to make for parties and get-togethers. All these memories of this particular food came flooding back. Poolside hangouts over a big bowl of chips and salsa with my cousins. New Year's Eve appetizer spread. Fourth of July celebrations, dipping and crunching under the light of fire. Hey, by the way, get this guy out of jail. Can this be introduced at a parole hearing? They should be introduced at a parole hearing. He should be let out of jail because of this. Being a food writer and an all-around food uh, lover, I couldn't resist making the salsa for myself. And lo and behold, it was every bit as amazing as I remembered. The zesty flavor combo of fresh tomato, cilantro, and onion <laughs> and the minced pico de gallo like texture remained as irresistible as they were in my last adolescence when presumably she was being hunted by a predator. Looks good. It does look great. But despite the perfection of Gary's famous salsa, uh, making it brought up some conflicting emotions. Sure, it was restaurant quality, but I had to wonder if I included this recipe in my own cooking repertoire, would it always remind me of the horrors of my stepfather? Could I ever look 
at its jewel-toned blend of veggies without flashing back to the pain of my past? After giving it some thought, I came to a decision. Instead of thinking about this delicious dip as a sole property of my abuser, maybe I could make it my own. I never had many family recipes passed down to me, so maybe this one could be a family recipe. In the truest, raw sense, one that bears the scars of my past but reveals my resilience, too. That's the kind of recipe I'd like to pass down to my children. The more I make the salsa, the less it bears my abuser's imprint. I just love the idea of her handing it down to her children, and she goes, listen, the salsa recipe I'm about to give you comes from a very bad man, a man who would do horrible things. But one thing he didn't do was make bad salsa. He was abusive. He was a pedophile. (laughs) He bankrupted your grandmother. (laughs) But what he didn't do was fuck up a dip. I mean, Christ. I wish her all the best. Mm. That's a real Austin, Texas article. She should move to Austin. I hope the dad gets out. Like, I really, really hope the dad gets out of prison because of this. Like, at the parole hearing, he reads this. Mm. and, And they have to try the salsa. Like, they're like, okay, he's in here for possession, child pornography, and all these other things. But, like, the, the, the parole board has to, like, they have to take a bite of the salsa, and they start looking at each other. Now, by the way, this is a fun reinvention of the show Top Chef. Finding out what pedophiles in prison dishes that they were famous for, making them cook them, and if they're as good as their victims remember, they get out. Is there anything wrong with that? You know? <clears throat> Like, maybe there's a pedophile who made a really good guac. And, like, they're like, if you can get the perfect match of lime, cilantro, salt, and pepper. I mean, we don't need you rotting away in here. By the way, no one is working because of the stimulus and that companies don't want to pay. So why not get this guy out of jail and, and let him make salsa somewhere? He doesn't have to do it in a school. Let him make salsa at a, at a restaurant where only ugly adults work. I knew a city with a lot of fours and fives working. I live very close to it. I think that's what he should do. TimDillonComedy.com. Sorry about San Diego, folks. Family thinks, you know, what do you want me to do? We're coming back in December. Chicago, there's some tickets left. Be there at the end of August. Patreon episode will be out tomorrow. Rothschild tier episode is out right now with Andrew Sullivan, who's a great writer, a very interesting guy. He pioneered blogging on the internet. We have a very interesting talk about the United States of America and where it is. We, we were thinking of releasing it as the episode, but we thought everybody would be really angry at a, a serious interview after the episode was late for, what are we going on, 48 hours? Yeah, about 48 hours, yeah. But I want you to go buy his book, and his new book is called Out on a Limb, book by Andrew Sullivan, selected writings, and uh, he's all over the place, gay, Somewhat conservative, has HIV, mm-hmm. is for the Iraq war, but against it, liked Obama, but then realized the, uh, the limits of Obama. He's killing it over on Substack, where all those journalists are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Did you see dish. a little beef between uh, Brett Weinstein and Sam Harris over the vax? There was a little tss, put that tss beef on the grill. I don't want to go into this. I'm not a doctor, but... Uh, can, I don't know if we can play his channel. Here's a word. No, no, no. Play. Don't do anything there. You you know that God only knows. I want to offer these gentlemen something. If you want to debate the vaccine, I will dress like Meghan McCain and sodomize myself on my show while you guys debate the vaccine. So if Brett Weinstein and Sam Harris want to come on my show and debate the vaccine, I will take a dildo to my ass brutally Dress up like Meghan McCain to the point where, like, I literally shit myself on my own show. Like, in stirrups, just fucking wedging it in there. Shit, just, and blood, rivers of shit and blood all over the studio while you guys discuss the vaccine. Anyway, open invite. Good night.